Today's Spontane Nation is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the easiest way to create a beautiful website, blog, or online store for you and your ideas. Squarespace features an elegant interface, beautiful templates, and incredible 24-7 customer support. Try Squarespace at squarespace.com and enter offer code PFT at checkout to get 10% off. Squarespace. You should. Howdy, y'all. It's Mag Weldon here. Listen, I'm going to keep this brief, okay? Brief. Uh, now, that's, that's almost a pun already. You don't even know what I'm all about yet. Listen, whatever kind of underwear you're wearing right now, throw it away. Don't even donate it. It, it. No one deserves this underwear you're wearing because Mac Weldon underwear, that's underwear I make, is better than whatever you're wearing right now. You know why? I'll tell you why. I believe in smart design, premium fabrics, and simple shopping. That's three the three tenets of Mac Weldon way of life. Okay? It's easy. I make the shopping experience easy, and the product is great. All, speak, let me tell you about the product. All of it naturally antimicrobial. That means odor gets eliminated. Now, look, if I had my way... I'd eliminate every microbe on this planet. I do not like microbes. I'm against them. Oh, Mac, some microbes are uh, useful. I, I don't want to hear that. That's, that's a debate for another time. Just right now, let me just say my piece. I don't like microbes. I'm against them. I want you to be comfortable. If you don't like your first pair of Mac Weldon underwear, keep it. Keep it. I don't care. You keep it. I'll still refund you. I don't care. Look. I'm a wealthy man. I've built myself an empire. I don't need to be counting pennies, people returning their underwear, and me getting a full refund. Also, you can't return underwear. Come on. That's a personal item. Now, not only do my underwear, socks, and shirts look good, they perform well, too. Whatever you need to do. You're going to go out. You're going to work out. You're going to go out on a date. You going to just hang around the house doing a Sudoku. I don't care. Do people still do Sudoku? I never had no time for it. My, my idea of relaxation doesn't involve numbers. You know what I'm saying? I like to get out, clear some brush. Go to MacWeldon.com, get 20% off using promo code PFT. That's right, PFT. Like the host of Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. That way, you not only... Do me a solid by, by patronizing my business. You're helping support Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins, and also you treating yourself. I don't know what else you need to hear. Go to MacWeldon.com. Use promo code PFT. Get twenty percent off. Death to microbes. <laughs> <laughs> Fun already. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, all of you. Welcome to everyone who took the time to stream this episode, to download it, to overhear someone else listening to it. You little creeps. I love you. What are you doing? Listening to other people's podcasts. What are those people doing? Not listening with an earphone or an earbud. Or an ear cone. If you have your ears coned, where they put the wax in there, and then they pull out the wax that's already in there, <laughs> I don't know how it works. I think it's a wax on wax crime is what I understand. <laughs> Why not save your coned ear shape? Get a hole going in there. Make it into a cool ear horn. What's an ear horn? An ear horn is the thing that old people used to use in Charlie Chaplin times, they'd have this ear trumpet that they would hold up to their ear. A! <laughs> and then you would have to repeat yourself into the thing. It made a lot of sense. It was like, I could do this with my hand, just cut my hand around my ear, but I don't feel like I'm getting everything. I think this needs a special tool. There is a video. You can find this on YouTube. It's, it, it's absolutely worth your time. Maybe you've seen it already. I think it's I think it's been passed around a lot. It's the Bay City Rollers, who are a 1970s Scottish rock and roll combo. They had a big hit with Saturday Night, 
which someone in this room might be playing on piano right now. <laughs> a very <laughs> mellow lounge version of it. And they're performing the show on some sort of top of the pops, chart friends, whatever. Grand, the grand list, whatever they called those shows back then. And the audience is a million billion old people and they're loving it. They are clapping along and they are like cartoons of old people come to life. And at one point there's a woman, an old lady with an ear trumpet. It is much, <laughs> that made me think it was fake. Like, oh, this is somebody doctored this. That's really good. That looks like a real person. All I'm saying, old people, is some old people are, are ashamed of using a hearing aid. Like, I don't want some thing in my ear. <laughs> there was a time when old people were like, hey, not only can I not hear you, I don't give a shit what you think about it. I'm holding up what looks like a musical instrument to my head. <laughs> Shine on, you crazy diamonds. You crazy elderly diamonds. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Spontaneous Nation with Paul F. Tompkins. I am the second part. This is a show where I invite a special guest on to have a free-form chat. I think we're doing things a little differently today. I, I booked a certain special guest. That special guest was unable to attend. He is uh, he's on a television show, and they're doing a wardrobe fitting today. Started two hours before he was to be here. And I guess they were getting all the clothes for... This season and future seasons out of the way because at the time he was supposed to be here, got a call from his manager and then an email from him asking me to text him. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand that system. But anyway, he was coming from basically in Los Angeles, what should be considered the other side of the globe. <laughs> and there was no way he was going to make it here in time. Luckily... There's a good Samaritan right here in our office. More on him in a moment. So after I interview the special guest, I introduce some improviser pals of mine. Let's come on and we make up a story based on a location provided by our guest and using, perhaps, details from our chat. And it is all scored on piano by Mr. Eben Schletter. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> I've memorized that song. <laughs> <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you our special guest. This man, I, I hope I get your titles correct. Just go for it. Let's see what happens. <laughs> First of all, he's the host of The Wolf Den right here on That's Earwolf. That's my number one. Yeah. Also, I saw in my email that you asked me to be on the show, and I never responded. I appreciate that. <laughs> That was embarrassing. I'm like, I'm climbing out. I'm climbing out from under a mountain of inbox. And then I see this one. It's from so long ago. Uh, uh, at least a year. No, not maybe, a year. Maybe not a year. Might as well be a year. Yeah. It's mortifying. Mortifying. Because here's the thing. Like, I go through the, the email client that I have. I go through a page. I don't, I don't really realize there's two more pages coming. So like I <laughs> answer an email, my standard answer to all emails now is, uh, Hey, I'm sorry. I didn't write you back six months ago. Um, <laughs> but, uh, there's been a fire in my home. <laughs> I'd lie now. <laughs> and then like another page pops up like what, where did those, I thought I got to the bottom of this and then Nope, there's more. And then I saw yours. I was mortified. So I apologize. I accept but your apology. Here we are now though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In addition to being those of the awkward. Wolf Dead right here at Earwolf, he is also the CEO of Earwolf? Yeah. Oh, thank God. And you probably have a couple other titles, right? I do, yeah. Well, I'm the CEO of Midroll. Midroll. owns Earwolf. That's right. Uh, so I'm sort of the de facto CEO of uh, Earwolf. Oh, de facto. I picked up another title when we got acquired by Scripps mm -hmm. in Mr. July. Mr. Scripps. Yes, yes, Mr. Scripps himself acquired us, and I got uh, the title of... Vice President of Digital Audio Ooh. Scripts. VP of DA. VP of DA at S. Please. At EWS. <laughs> Please welcome EWS's VP of DA, <laughs> Mr. Adam Sachs. Hi. Adam, thank you for being here. Thank you for not being on my show. Now, 
It's not too late for me to be on it, though. That's or is true. it? No, no. I think this is. I'm earning. Because, I'm right now being here. I'm earning your appearance on my show because I never gave you an answer. Yes. That means I never said no. That's true. There I took it as a no. Uh, oh, that's funny that you would do that. I took that. it as a polite, not interested. You you took it as silence renders non consent. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, that's not the way I operate. <laughs> I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> Fair enough. Adam, thank you so much for being here in the office oh. and then agreeing yep. to do this. You got off a phone call <laughs> to come do this. <laughs> we will not keep you very long. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Adam, I have a question for you. Okay. My question is, <laughs> this is from our previous episode's guest. Mm -hmm. Are you curious as to who the guest is? Yeah, am I allowed to know? Well, if you'd like to know, and I'm sure some listeners would like to know as well, I would direct you to the Spontaneous Nation archives at howl.fm. Yes. Hours of listening pleasure await you. <laughs> Our previous episode's uh, guest asks this question of you. What about baseball? Mm. Okay. <laughs> Do I answer? You answer to the best of your ability. Whatever that question means to you. Hmm. Okay. Are you a baseball fan? <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. I'm a sports fan. I what are your sports? I really like basketball. I, mm -hmm. play, I played basketball uh, in my life. I played in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your position? I was a uh, an unathletic uh, small forward. So I don't have to ask, were you good? Uh, yeah, you don't. <laughs> <Okay>. I think, <laughs> Very few I greats was, of the game describe themselves as unathletic. No, I had what they called <laughs> the fundamentals. So like that's what they, that was a nice thing that they told people who were unathletic. They were right. like, oh, but he understands the fundamentals. <laughs> Uh, Meaning, like he he knows the rules of basketball. <laughs> he understands the rules. He knows that he's supposed to, yeah. you know, uh, to do a bounce pass as an entry pass to the, you know, to the big guy in the post. That should always be a bounce pass. I do. Example. Guess what? I do not have the fundamentals. Uh, I don't know. That was all gibberish to me. Okay. So yeah, I understood the fun the fundamentals, but I was not fast. Certainly couldn't jump high. Right. Uh, I could I could shoot a free throw really well, which I would say falls into that fundamentals category. Sure. So, uh, yeah, I did those things. Um, I, and I went to, like, basketball camps. And I did the things that you would do if you wanted to be good at basketball. Because you love the game. I love the game. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't have the natural gifts. Did you play other sports when you were a kid? I played a little tennis and a little soccer. And uh, I took a lot of golf lessons. My dad is an excellent golfer. And no matter how hard he or the like instructors tried, I could never become a good golfer. Is it? Do you ever play golf? I play now probably twice a year. Okay. Do you Which play with is, your dad? Uh, oh, he lives uh, in Jer in New Jersey, so in New I Jersey. Yeah, that's where I'm from. I didn't know that. Yeah, where you, in Jersey are you from? Um, the Red Bank area, the, a I've small heard of town it. called Rumson. Uh, North Jersey. It's Central Jersey on the coast. Central Central Jersey on the coast. Yes, so CJ Central on the sea. Yes, Central like North South, but uh, <laughs> East. Okay. <laughs> Can do you, you have, picture? Can yeah, you of course I can. No, no, no. I can yeah, see it. Okay, I can good. see it. Yeah. Um, do you have a? Uh, do you feel that you have a New Jersey identity? I I don't know if you've noticed. I have a giant photo uh, blown up of Bruce Springsteen on the wall in my office. Can we talk about your office for one moment? Because I did uh, the Hollywood Handbook podcast the other day, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a very funny show that you should check out. It's hosted by Sean Clements and Hayes Davenport, and we were in the lobby of Earwolf. Mm -hmm. And then Hayes Davenport looks over somewhere and says, Who's, whose office is this? And then one of our earwolf friends said, oh, that's Adam's office. Mm -hmm. And then he said, look look at this. And we well, like, went to your doorway, and the only thing you seemed to have on your wall was a <laughs> computer printed out uh, – uh, how did this get made logo uh, in a frame? Oh, that's Andrew's office. It's Andrew's that's office. Andrew's office. All yes. Right. That makes I me feel I would never have better. something silly like that. That I makes me feel. a giant Bruce okay. Springsteen photo on my wall. I feel better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because it's, it's the only thing in this dude's office. <laughs> yeah. In stacks and stacks of papers. Yeah. yeah. It's like, what the hell? There's yeah. a million shows on this network. <laughs> I know they're a big deal. I get it. But that's the only thing in your office. Yeah. And he. Presumably printed it out himself. Yeah, Got, it like, looks on, shitty. On our, yeah, it printer. looks bad. Yeah, exactly. You, then he went to Aaron Brothers and bought a discount frame. <laughs> yes. Anyway, well, I'm glad to hear it's not you. Yes. Um, was baseball ever a part of your life? I, I liked baseball. I, I watched baseball growing up. Uh, I watched the Mets mm -hmm. uh, growing up in New Jersey. Um, but then I got really into basketball, and I'm a big. I like watching football a lot too. I'm a big Giants fan. Did you ever play football? Never. 
never played. You played soccer and tennis. Soccer and tennis and, and, and basketball, a lot of basketball. Soccer is a thing that I feel is just after my time because I feel like people even a year younger than me grew up playing soccer. And it was not a part of my world. Like my kids in my the schools that I went to, it was just not a thing. I, yeah, I think my generation was like the first generation to really get into soccer. Why is soccer not bigger in the United States then? If all these people in this country grow up playing soccer, like yeah. they do it for years and years out of their lives, and then I feel like no one stays with it. Like thank I, I God, would argue that's it's not entertaining. <laughs> I think it's not fun to watch. <laughs> Basketball is fun to watch. People do say because I'm not a sports guy. Mm -hmm. uh, people do say basketball is the most entertaining sport because it's it's constant movement it and is. you can but you can still follow it unlike hockey, which is just like a mess. And yeah, that's true. And the thing about basketball is that there are like five people per team on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not unlike hockey or football. They're not covered with a mask, so you can like see their face. You can relate to them as people. You can see their facial expressions. You can really get up close and mm -hmm. personal with the with the players and. They are unbelievable athletes. Yes. Like they are, you know, baseball players. Some of them you see. I don't know if you saw Bartolo Colon, pitcher for the Mets. He's older. They brought him out of the bullpen. He must weigh over 300 pounds. <laughs> like he could never play another sport, like like a, an athletic sport like basketball. <laughs> it's astonishing to me that, that guys who play baseball, like they're not – that they're so disinterested in being physically fit. Yes. <laughs> you would think if you're drawn to that life, that it would be, at some point, it would be like, I like to move around. You know, I like to, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> nope, nope. A lot of guys, no, I do not like that. Golfers used to be like that, but Tiger Woods brought along this entire new um, idea that, oh, we're athletes. We could probably perform better if we were in, in better shape. And now a lot of golfers have started to actually care about fitness. Right. I, th I, think, it, I think it goes, uh, it crosses all boundaries. No matter what your profession is, you'd probably do a lot of things better if you, <laughs> if you, were in, if you didn't were. feel like shit all the time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, what was it that made you uh, not keep up with the other sports? Is it just that you find them dull? I find baseball to be pretty dull. Right. I don't. How many games are in a baseball season? You're not a baseball fan. One thousand. Yeah. No, there you know are. I used to too follow, many to keep up with. I used to follow when I was a kid, and then I just lost interest in it. Phillies. And then, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And then um, recently, um, because I'm tracking my friend's interest in baseball, and for some reason it seems like so much more this year. And I, I have yes. so many friends who are baseball fans and so passionate about it. And the thing that was really turning me around and made me feel like I want to get back into baseball was uh, my Canadian friends uh, with the Blue Jays. Really? They were so, it means so much to them. I didn't know that. It I, means so much to them. <laughs> I didn't know that they cared. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But people in Toronto, absolutely, it's a big deal. And I saw one picture of a very, very uh, uh, talented actor named Ennis Esmer, who I would love to have on the show sometime, um, who is on an a Amazon show called Red Oaks. Um, and he posted a picture of himself. He posted a lot about the Blue Jays, a lot about the Blue Jays, and how his dad, his dad was going to stop watching the games because he felt like he was jinxing them. <laughs> I love when people think that. I, the, it's their presence has an effect it's on. It's amazing, yeah. <laughs> and like, I don't want to. I, I don't want to be the guy that ruins this for everyone. Right. He posted a picture of himself next to this woman who had this. The only way to describe it is beautiful. Blue Jays logo sweater that like her mom made her when she was a kid or something. And it's, it's gorgeous. And I was like, this seems like fun to care about a thing like that. <laughs> I cared about the Cubs. So uh, this has been the, the one playoffs that I've cared at a little bit. Cubs Gr and growing the Mets. up a Mets fan. Sure. I went to college in Chicago, mm -hmm. uh, on the North side of Chicago where not too far from where the Cubs play. Mm -hmm. And that was a really fun thing. We would go to Cubs games all the time. So that sort of reignited a little bit of interest in baseball. But when you're in college and you're going to sit in the bleachers, it's much more about the drinking and yeah. the Wrigleyville scene, which is a great place to go and uh, hang out, than it is the actual game. Was Chicago the first time you lived away from New Jersey? Ooh. Yes. No, you had it, to really no, think, about, think it. about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it was. Have Chicago. you lived in many, many places? Yeah, sort of. Yeah, I think I have. It de depends how you define live, but uh, like for how long. I, I mean, I studied abroad, mm -hmm. so that sort of counts, right? Where? I studied abroad in Sydney, Australia. Sure, good uh -huh, Exactly. <laughs> what brought you there? Um, just it sounded like a fun place to study abroad. And was it? 
Oh, it was so much fun. <laughs> it was really a lot of it's fun. It's a beautiful city. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. The people are amazing. Mm-hmm. The um, just like work-life balance is great. And when you're studying abroad, you, you're really looking for a good work-life balance. Um, <laughs> so that was a lot of fun. How long were you there? Uh, probably f- four or five months. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's a good chunk of time. Yeah. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I've lived in, um, let's see, where else? Oh, after college, I went and lived in Europe for a year. Mm-hmm. So I lived in Madrid and Prague. Really? Mm-hmm. How did you like Praha? Praha was That's how they fun. Pronounce I was it. there for three months in Madrid for like nine months. Uh, right. and Praha was fun. It, it was a tough place to get around because I didn't like the language barrier was a thing. They didn't right. really speak a lot of English there. Because um, you almost there are some countries where you almost feel like you could kind of figure it out. Oh, totally. And in, <laughs> even if you don't speak in the Prague, language. it's not even close. It's, yeah. and it's not close to anything like you would study in school. It's not yeah. close to Spanish or French or any of those things, any of those languages. So yeah, that was challenging. Yeah. But it's a beautiful city. My wife and I went to Iceland recently, and uh, the m- most challenging thing for me was um, the GPS because. Uh, the the alphabet is different. So you, there were certain <laughs> things like, I don't know how to enter this in here. Right. I don't know. Where is this, yeah. like, you with the dots on top of Yeah, it. and then we're trying to communicate with each other. It's like, I don't know how to tell you what we're supposed to be looking <laughs> right, for. Right, <laughs> And you could see a word and just have no idea how to pronounce it. Like Abs- in, of course. You know, Czech, it's, it was the same way. I, yeah. would, I couldn't even begin to to pronounce the, the words I saw on the page. And in Madrid? Madrid, I loved. Mm-hmm. Um, I that was a, I could kind of pick up the language. I, I, didn't, I never mm-hmm. studied Spanish, but it was close enough to French that you can get by. I studied Did, French you, in school. You spoke some French. Like, you know, high school French. Were you able to eventually communicate in like a broken Spanish? Yes, yeah. I was. Um, by the end, definitely. Mm-hmm. And But the, I feel like my brain only had capacity for like one of those languages. So... It really felt like there w- it was a zero-sum game. Like every word I learned in Spanish, I forgot a word in French. And the more <laughs> Spanish I would learn, the more French I would forget. I don't – maybe it's just my brain is just incapable of kind of having both of them coexist. Right. So by the end, I felt like, oh, I can speak Spanish, and I've forgotten every word of French I ever knew. Where does it stand now? Now I'm way more on the Spanish side on, than on the French really? side. Really? Yeah. Um, and when did you move to Los Angeles? And what brought uh, you here? I came out here to join this company, Mm -hmm. um, Midroll Media, Mm -hmm. uh, a little more than two years ago. Mm -hmm. I had been living in New York. And before that, I lived in India. Uh, How long did you live in India? On and off for about two years. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's quite a culture shock. That was a huge culture shock, yes. As we talked about, I learned to appreciate room temperature water. Mm -hmm. Um, (laughs) I, uh, I, I liked India a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you ever been? I've never been. I would love to go. It's very intimidating, though. It is. It's, it's, it, I, when people are like, did you love it? I, my response is like, it's an amazing place to visit. Right. Um, yeah. But living there is tough. I have a hard time. And a thing that was difficult for me about living in New York is I have a hard time being in a crush of people. <laughs> Makes me very uncomfortable. And whenever you see any kind of travelogue about India, it just seems like that's all there is. Yes. <laughs> the, it's an entire country that is shoulder to shoulder at all times. Absolutely. Oh, no, that's <laughs> totally true. And even like culturally, I think there's not necessarily the same sort of expectation uh, around personal space, like the same sort of respect. Yes. If you're in line at the airport in India, there is somebody, even if there's space behind them, there is somebody – touching you from behind. They're that close to you. In that's line. where the like, line that's is. That's how line, yeah, yeah. lines are. There should, not, there should be no space between you and the person. Because what if other people have to come along? Exactly. It's so there polite. Is, yes. So when you're in India, it is, if you have a problem with, with like personal space, you wouldn't do very well. <laughs> then oh, maybe cross that one Don't off go. The list. Don't go. Another thing about India that I find fascinating is there's, there's these videos, uh, more YouTube homework for everyone, videos of these intersections because they don't have uh, any kind of uh, traffic lights or I don't there, think no no traffic rules yeah it's and, lawless and on it's the roads. crazy yes. you see these videos it'll make you so anxious because there's you'll see a lot of uh, tons and tons of near accidents and then mm-hmm. also accidents yes happening and all the time the one thing I didn't know either it, when people are driving down the road they are their hand is just permanently on their horn <laughs> it is like so it's. <laughs> As, oh, not at the ready. They're just honking the horn honking the as they drive. <laughs> trucks, you know how trucks here will have signs on the back that's like, how's my driving? Call yeah. this number. <clears throat> I swear on the back of trucks in India, it says, horn okay, please. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I think it means you should just honk your horn. 
<laughs> hey, don't worry. You're going to freak me out with your sudden horn honking. <laughs> yeah, I'd okay. rather you do it's, it. It's okay. Please. <laughs> If you could live somewhere else, is there a place you haven't lived that you you would like to try living? Hmm, that's a good question. Thank you. Um, I think Paris. Where? where? Yes, I, I I'd have to go. I'd have to do the reverse uh, language transformation where I get the French back. That's and, right. And uh, start out with your Spanish. Spanish. <laughs> yes. That's right. Um, but I just love Paris. Adam, on that note, thank you very much <laughs> oh, for being yeah, here. My pleasure, Paul. <laughs> Adam, you have done us a solid, oh, and it will not for be forgotten. Me. Thank you. Thank you for having <laughs> thank me. Thank you. You will see another email from me. <laughs> and you will get a response <laughs> immediately. <laughs> yes. Uh, we're going to take a break. During the break, we will get a location for our improv from Adam Sachs. And when we return, you will meet our improvisers, all this and nothing else, when Spontaneous Nation returns. This week's Spontaneous Nation is sponsored by Spritza Box. Oh, that sounds exotic. Listen, you don't need to spend a lot of money to look good. You really don't. People ask me about clothes all the time. I wish they would stop, but hopefully this will be helpful to people because Spritza Box is redefining the shopping experience and is disrupting the retail market. Mm, take that retail market. Here's the thing. Ties, socks, things like that, accessories, that's where you really come into your own style, right? It's the little accents that make the big difference. And no one should overspend on these things, all right? Spreads a box, cuts out the middle man, and they go, and you they, they give this stuff right to you. It simplifies the shopping experience. You don't have to go around some men's section in the department store you don't know what you're looking for there's a lot of junk in there Salespeople on you constantly can i help you can i help you hey i'm a big boy you want to say but that would make you seem like a small boy you would be embarrassed here's what happens with spreads a box a new box is shipped out each month it contains five to six products socks ties cufflinks sunglasses shave products and more Subscriptions start at $25 a month and are guaranteed to have over $100 in retail value. Are you? Guys, if this doesn't sound good to you, go get your ears checked. An in-house stylist picks quality products from all different name brands. So you're going to get cool stuff, right? You're not going to get ugly ties. You're not going to get just random crazy colored socks. You get premium styles and patterns professionally chosen based off the season and current trends. So this stuff is up to date, right? Sharp. And it's shipped straight to your door. If you're looking to step it up this year and you want an awesome deal, go to spretzabox.com and get 20% off your first month's box with discount code PFT. That is S-P-R-E-Z-Z-A-B-O-X.com and enter code PFT. Guys, I'm trying to help you here. Squarespace, you've heard of it. You know all about it, but you haven't used it yet. Why? Are you afraid? You, you don't think it's as easy as they say it is? Guess what it is. Building a website is hard. It's frustrating. It Make you want to smash things. Even if you do know your way around coding, which I didn't, and I don't. Creating something that looks good and works well takes a lot of time. Time you don't have because life is short. and Soon we'll all be dead. So whether you got a business, whether you got a portfolio, whatever, you probably need a website. Squarespace makes it easy to build beautiful websites without breaking a sweat. Uh, how would you sweat making a website? It's not like you're actually hammering nails and stuff. You can sweat out of frustration, jerk. Don't try to trip me up. Not only does Squarespace provide you with intuitive and easy-to-use tools to create your website with, with which to create your website, excuse me. Squarespace also has state-of-the-art technology powering your site, which ensures security and stability. So you can put whatever's up there. You're not going to get hacked. It's not going to be all squiggly if somebody tries to go to your site. They're going to see what you want them to see. They're going to be able to access what you want them to access. It's great. And you know you can trust in Squarespace for your website needs. Millions of people and some of the most respected brands in the world Trust in them too. 
okay? You cannot beat the ease and simplicity of Squarespace. They give you 24-7 online support and a beautiful website. What are you waiting for, guys? Start a trial with no credit card required. Start building your website today. This is your chance to put whatever you want online. Do you have artwork? Do you have a little business? Do you have your hopes and dreams? Put them all online with Squarespace. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code PFT. You get 10% off your first purchase, and you show your support for Spontane Nation with me, the PFT. Squarespace, I want to say thank you for supporting Spontane Nation. And listeners, I want to say thank you for supporting Squarespace. Here comes the law, uh, tagline. Squarespace. You should. We're back after what can only be called a terrific ad. Evan, of course, playing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. A wonderful song with people saying, a place where they already are in the ball game. <laughs> you should be singing that beforehand, dum-dums. <laughs> too little, too late. What about, how? why not here we are at the ball game? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Folks, it is time to introduce our pals from the land of Make Pretend. <laughs> Sitting kitty corner from me, she's making her return to Spontaneous Nation. This young lady. No, not that young. First of all, she's modest. <laughs> she is an hilarious uh, improviser and podcaster. She seems very worried about that, but we're going to explore it. Please welcome back to the show, Carla Kakowski. What up, Paul? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who's this now? <laughs> Hi, Paul. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Carla, you have a podcast about improv. I do. What's it called? It's called The Improv Yak. Y-A-K. Yep. Like yak, yak, yak. We're talking. Yeah, we're talking. Not. It's not a magical beast of burden. <laughs> nope. Who <laughs> teaches you how to yes Shoot, and. Shoot, I should have done that. That's what it should have been. Make that a logo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Don't turn around. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Carla, how have you been since the last time I've seen you? Oh, drunk. And good. <laughs> <laughs> Just the whole so time. So good. The whole, it's been months of drinking and partying. I'm such a party animal. You love to party. I do. What is it about partying that appeals to you so? Hmm, <laughs> dancing. You lo- do you like to dance? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you a person that you will look for, like any opportunity if somebody says, hey, we're going to go to this club, let's, let's go dancing. Yeah, no, no. Okay. Yeah, no. Wait, no is an option. Right. I asked you a yes or no Maybe. question. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> In between. Do you ever organize people to go out dancing? Do you yes, ever say, I feel I like do. doing this? Do you guys want to go dancing? <laughs> Can we organize all of us to go dancing? Uh, I'm, I'm afraid I can't. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> What's your favorite dance? The mashed potato? <laughs> <laughs> That's up there. <laughs> What's number one? <laughs> the Cabbage Patch. The Cabbage Sure. You ever throw in a running man? The Roger Rabbit. What's the Roger Rabbit again? That's this one. Okay. Because uh. he does it in the movie. Yeah. I know what you mean. Sure. Everyone, look up the Roger Rabbit. <laughs> a lot of homework, guys. A lot of stuff for you to look up Ooh, today. Lots of homework. Carla, uh, where can people find your podcast? On the internet. There we go. I love it when people respond. iTunes. Like that. Thank you. <laughs> iTunes. Look. I love you, Carla. Paul, Paul don't get I'm mad at me. I'm not looking don't at you mad anymore. At me, Paul. <laughs> don't get mad. Turn back. Turn back. Please don't get mad at me. <laughs> you're you're always. You assume. I feel like your default is. Don't get mad. You at assume me. people are mad at you. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> and the exception is, oh, that person's not mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's, it's sort of like guilty until proven innocent with you. I really piss people off. <laughs> you're, an, you're an incendiary figure. It's yeah. true. Yeah. I'm going to turn away from you, but I still like you. Bye, Paul. Right next to me, this is our traditional seat here on the show. She's the host of the JV Club podcast. She is gripping her chair arm very tightly. She may have emotional problems. Her name goes 
Little Janet Vardy. <laughs> One week has passed since you last called me that, I think, and already I'm delighted. It feels like four years since that yeah. happened. Yeah. Janet and I, uh, with uh, our <laughs> Thrilling Adventure Hour colleagues, were in New York for Comic-Con, and we did an improv show, and I was tasked with introducing the improv show and introducing the individual improvisers, and Janet was last, and for... <laughs> I don't know why this happened. It just popped into my head and it seemed to make sense. I introduced her as Little Janet Vardy. <laughs> oh boy. But it's some and then and then I got scared because I was like, is that insulting or demeaning? Because <laughs> in my mind it wasn't at all. It was just like that was your stage name. <laughs> And then I asked you, we were backstage at a show, and I said, Does it, did it bother you when I said that? And then you showed me on the script, you had written Little Janet. <laughs> I think I wrote Lil with a, Lil an Janet. apostrophe. Lil Janet. There Barney. we go. Yeah, well, because we all, and I'm including every person who loves listening to this podcast, <laughs> would love to have a nickname that Paul F. Tompkins gives us. So... I mean, I feel I'm very lucky that you chose that one <laughs> because I don't have to make peace with it. Sure. The way I would if you were like, garbage, Janet Varney. Garbage. I mean, he did give me a, he gave me a nickname. That's a, I mean, that's affectionate, right? He said, it in, a a very, he said it in a warm way. Yeah. I guess I, I do, I do like garbage. Garbage. <laughs> I guess I do like garbage. I must. He sees me. Janet, you're just a, a big old raccoon who <laughs> somehow... Me. That's me. My Mace. raccoonery <laughs> is known for miles around. Now, I want to quickly say that. Oh, yeah, please. I'm actually not on speaking terms with Carla, so I don't know oh, how no. this is going to go. I am don't very angry with her. <laughs> it's too late, Carla. I forget why. I just remember she told me I was. <laughs> I am furious. So I'm not going to look at you or make eye contact with you or talk to you. Except in character. Except in ca well, in oh, character. I'll see you in the scene. God. In the character, I'll see you in the scene. Professionalism <laughs> carries your back. the day. Touch your back. Touch your back. Story for another time. <laughs> <laughs> See, they directly across from me. This guy, he's been on the show. We're pointing fingers at each other. We're going to touch fingers <laughs> like a double ET. <laughs> this gentleman has been on the show many, many times. He's my colleague in the Thrilling Adventure Hour. He is one of the cast members of Drunk History. Uh, may I say, because I think Mark Evan Jackson said this, and I want to reiterate it, the heart and soul of Drunk History. Ah. Uh. <laughs> So I was just, I just watched the most recent episode last night. Delightful. You, Blasuch. <laughs> Munderscore. Mun <laughs> Munderscore Blasucci. <laughs> it is I I you guys make me laugh so much on that show. It's such a weird <laughs> specific thing that you're doing, and it's fantastic. Anyway, the guy's name, it goes Craig Kakowski. <laughs> Big Craig Kikowski. Big Craig. <laughs> Big bad Craig. <laughs> Craig, Carla, full disclosure, you're married to each other. As of this recording. Yes. This is, oh. oh my God. <laughs> Don't get mad at me. <laughs> this is the first time we've had a married couple on the show. Really? really? Yes. I'm yes, trying yes, to yes. think. No, that's Not Matt Gorley and Mark McConville. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> No, you're right. Okay. We've had a boyfriend and a girlfriend sure. on the show before. Oh, that's right. Yeah. But you're our first legally wed couple. Weird. Wow. I'm you're happy to break that ground. Yes, yeah, exactly. You know, we danced pretty recently in Austin. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, maybe the first time we'd ever danced together. Uh, like, I don't think we danced at our wedding, did we? Nope. Did we you have did, a slow dance? Like we did your... not have like a first dance. Really? Not that oh, I we were... did. Yeah. What Jean, did we dance to? Jean Villapeek sang to us. Oh, we danced. I didn't know Jean could sing. <laughs> what a lovely discovery. Oh, she's, oh, got, she's a got a great, great voice. voice. Yeah. What did she sing? Like folksy uh, no, no, guitar. No, no. She <laughs> sing at the wedding. I was, what did I sing at, uh, uh, at Jean's wedding? Well, I'll tell yeah, you. The Bee Gees song. I made it about me. Oh, she's... Uh, I just she's... wanna be your everything. No, um, that's Andy Gibb, right? Isn't that Well, Andy Gibb is the younger brother of the Bee Gees. Oh right. He's well, one that's of the he complicated. Is also, that's he a is lot. a brother Gibb, but he's not one of the Bee Gees. More of a Gibb brother than More a brother. Of a Gibb, Gibb brother. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not old, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm young. You're 11 years old, right? I am. So your marriage is not <laughs> legally valid. No, it is not, sir. Okay, well, the ugly specter of that will hang over the rest of the program. <laughs> Guys, we have our location from Adam Sachs, and we're about to begin our improv for the audience, just so you know. To aid our storytelling, 
we use sound effects to move us about in time. Now, let's say we want to, we're in one scene, we want to go someplace else at the exact same moment. Something is occurring at the exact same moment. You'll hear this cut to sound effect. Whoosh, we're over there. Let's say we want to go into the past. You know, you get the present and the past, right? Like this is the present. And then the past is what happened before this. <laughs> Guys, I cannot explain the concept of time to you right now. If we're going to go in the past, we'll use this flashback sound effect. Now, we all want to go into the future because that means we're still alive. Every day we're traveling into the future. Every second. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> when we go into the future, you'll hear this flash forward sound effect. You guys got it. <laughs> now, we're going to begin our improv. And this is narrative improv, by the way. If you're new to the show, it's one continuous story as opposed to uh, unrelated scenes. So uh, uh, don't feel like, hey, this scene is really going on for a long time. <laughs> the, that's the idea. <laughs> So, <laughs> now I've explained everything. <laughs> Our location provided to us by Adam Sachs is... This is <laughs> funny because uh -oh. we just had this... How long ago? It's like a, just like four episodes ago. Pediatrician's office. <laughs> <laughs> we take you now to a pediatrician's office. Or just, as it's written, pediatrician's office. <laughs> Here we go. Pediatrician's office. Charlie, blow your nose. Blow it. I'm not, I'm not stuffed up, Mom. <sighs> you are taxing me today. What am I, the IRS? <sighs> God damn it. Just blow your nose, please. You took the Lord's name in vain. Charlie. Charles, I know we don't go to Alan Medicono, blow your nose. All right, we're blowing on my sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> excuse, excuse me, could you keep it down because my my daughter is very she's not feeling very well, and I think that the loud noises will startle her. So please just keep it down. I am so sorry. My son is a uh, trial and tribulation every day of my life. Well, you know, I know a bit about trials and tribulations from my study of scripture. Oh, mom, please don't do that. Here. Well, it's important that they know. Oh, um, God, God uh, so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to save us all from sin and damnation. Well, uh, mom, this woman's put me to sleep. Don't be rude. C can I tell you guys something? I, sh I'm not even sick. She makes me come here so she can talk to people and proselytize. I feel fine. I'm not even sick either. Oh, you're not sick, little boy. Why would you be here in the pediatrician's office? <laughs> Charlie, my, you're running a fever. My mom's a hypochondriac Charlie, for other people. Charlie. Are you talking about Munchausen by proxy syndrome? Yes, exactly. She has Munchausen was, by proxy ugh, syndrome. That was also written about in the scriptures. Yes, it was. Lo, it said in Munchausen. Go, in Gar Animals 2. Sure. <laughs> and she shall feed oven cleaner to her first begotten, and he will complain of stomach pains, and they will go before the Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, look upon me and pity me as the wretch, and the Pharaoh will have them stoned to death with spears. Charlie, please step away from the strangers. That girl's not a stranger. We go to school together. A word? Hi, is this Charlie. true? Yes. But she's the girl who's always kind of quiet and weird in the back of the room. What? Well, now Ruth is doing as she is told and not speaking to others who are damned to hell. I, I, I try to keep to myself and I, I try to learn and I try not to get in anybody's way because what I see my mom doing is getting in everybody's life, trying to make changes. I, I'd rather be invisible. Ruth? I wish that I could homeschool you rather than send you to that sinful place, but I like to watch my stories. I know, Mama. And so I can't take time out to be teaching about arithmetic and how the world is 100 years old. Yes, those stories and your love of them has pretty much saved my sanity. Well, there you go. What stories are you talking about? Are you super into soaps? <clears throat> Why, yes, I do like soap. What's your favorite soap? Well, Days of Our Lives, of course. Sure. What's yours? Do you watch the soaps, little boy? I kind of like Days of Our Lives. Is do that the one with Patch and Kayla? Now, Charlie, would you remind me, when is it 
too old to visit a pediatrician. Why you ask? No, I just some of the kids in, uh, at school, we just think you have a very deep voice. That's all. Yeah, I do have a deep voice because it's changed already. His father had puberty. a very deep voice. Had a very, very deep voice. Now, Charlie, I'm not always going to be around for you. You just need to know that. And you, <laughs> you can't leave. You can't leave us. I've got to leave. No, you can't leave me with our son. I'm nope. terrified of our son. Please. I've got to see the world. No, please don't go. No, nope. please don't. I want to learn languages. Please don't go. I get up. I please see, don't go. I want to see India. <laughs> no, please. There's too many people there. You'll fall in love with somebody else. Dad, come back. Dad, come back. Dad, come back. My voice changed that day, the day he left. Well, that's a terrible story. Your husband, I guess, is he still in India? As far as we know. Does he write? Does he call? He texts occasionally. Oh, the roaming must be off the charts. Charlie, the other thing we, we notice about you is that you tell people that your father's sending you secret messages from India through soap operas. Yeah. Charlie. <laughs> yeah, he is. He talks through Patch. Well, uh, Patch and Kayla from Days of Our Lives, I think. Yes. From D O O L. Uh, from D O O L. That's right, full stop. Patch, please, uh, you, you can't you can't go out the door. Don't go there. Kayla, don't stand so close to me. It's like I don't have any personal space. Oh, but I love you and your, your chest is so hairy. I just want to swim in it. Swim, Kayla. Swim. Now, Patch is the one who sounds like a woman with a sore throat. <laughs> yeah. He's easily the best character on the show. <laughs> easily. But what? Well, well, I don't get the decoded messages from... Swim. Swim. My dad wants me to swim to India and join him there. Charlie, you have snot all over your face. Please blow your nose. I do not, Mom. Please say mucus, because snot is a cuss word, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's quite all right. Don't send me into that doctor's office. It's creepy. There's just one poster <laughs> that he clearly photocopied off the internet. Uh, does this look crooked? Um, like, does the person in the picture look like he's not to be trusted? Ooh, I hadn't even thought about that. I was just talking about, you know, I, I framed it myself and I hung it up here, but now I'm Oh, is it level? It. Yeah, level. No, I, I, Doctor, it's very level. Of course, I'm a nurse, so I, I have not been trained in many things. That's right. You sure do like, uh, sure do like uh, uh, correcting my use of uh, words, how I don't know so many words for being a doctor. Well, your specialty is the body and not the mind. That's right. Don't forget it. I, I patch up sick little kids and tell them to drink their milk. That's all. That's all there is to it. Yeah. Anyway, should I get more stuff to hang in my office or no? Um, no, I think that's good. That's all I need. Just that printout of that Entertainment Weekly cover featuring Patch and Kayla. Yeah. No, I think um, I think it's gonna send the right message. Good. Good. I am all about sending messages to these kids and their parents. Um, Mrs. M Malakalala. That's exactly right. That's us. <laughs> Mrs. Malakalala and uh, Charlie, are mm -hmm. you ready to come in? The doctor is ready to see you now. Charlie, we have to go. You have to be all healed for your basketball game this weekend. I'm unathletic, Mom. Uh, shut up. Do you have the fundamentals, huh? Pretty great at fundamentals, though. Well, would you like to pray before you go into the doctor's Mom, office? I think that's, that's a fantastic so idea. We haven't prayed ever. <sighs> okay, let's all join hands. But, uh, no, I don't want to kneel. Mom, Ruth, please don't, Ruth, please don't make Ruth, me kneel. This lady's hands are ice cold. Prostrate yourself before the Lord Jesus Christ, who is somewhere up above the ceiling. Okay. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, we ask that you bless Charles and his mother... Mary. Mary. Oh, that's a good one. As they go into the doctor's office to see what is wrong with Charles and his outrageous mucus output. This blows. <laughs> we will... Charlie, be nice. Be nice. We ask that you look down upon us with kindness and favor. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a fucking myth. <gasps> Whoa! <gasps> now that one. Charlie. I heard that one, Charles. Sorry, lady. Sorry to piss on your beliefs, Ooh. but... 
Um, I'm so sorry to interrupt the uh, very inappropriate prayer in this doctor's office, but uh, the doctor runs a very tight schedule. He has a lot of entertainment weeklies he needs to get to before the end of the day. So if you could please come inside, Charles. And I believe in the separation of church and doctor. (sighs) Well, God bless you, but I bet he's probably not going to. Yes, sir, come come right in. Hey, Doc. Oh, it's little Charles. How are you? Yeah, nothing too much has changed since the last time I was here. Still got that crazy deep voice? Yeah, is there anything you can do about it? No, it's a gift. You should be happy uh, that you're you're becoming a young man. Uh, how old are you now? 14. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's about, you're right on track. You're in the 100th percentile. I've been having some trouble hearing lately. Oh, really? Is there anything you can do for that? Well, let's check your ears. Turn Turn your head to the side so I can get at the hole. The ear hole? Yeah. What'd you think of it? I don't know. Do you think I was using a basketball term? Yeah, my coach tells me to get at the hole. The ear hole? <laughs> the, hole the, no, basketball, the basketball. The basketball hole. Basketball hole. <laughs> basketball hole. That's how he gets us really pumped up for a game. He's like, take it to the, what is it? Did he say? Take it, the, to, take it to the basketball hole. Take it hole. to the basketball hole. <laughs> he says the whole thing? Yeah, he no, does. No slang? <laughs> Just... Spells it all out. Take it to the basketball hole. That's what he says, all right? All right. Hey, Charles, you know, I, I like that you're uh, you're growing up and you're uh, standing up for yourself, but uh, shut up, son. Mary, uh, yeah, I'm here. what's going on with... <laughs> Good. Okay. That does it for attendance. Uh, Mrs. Mario? Yes, that's exactly right. What what seems to be Charles' problem? And Charles, you got to stay out of this one, okay? Let your mom speak. Uh, <sighs> A, attitude. Yeah. Uh, B, snotty nose. Oh, I can see that. It's very shiny on his upper lip. And uh, C, he is obsessed with soap operas. Well, wait a minute. Charles, is this true? Yeah, what's wrong with that? Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Take a look at all my artwork. Sweet Patch and Kayla oh, cover. God. They're my oh, favorite. My God. What's the matter, Mary? What? I had no idea. I would have never brought Charlie here had I known that... <sighs> Are you against soap operas for some reason? I am trying to raise a man. I am a man, Mom. Listen to my voice. His voice is very deep, Mary. It's very deep. I know. Do you? Oh, do you? His let me. Had a let very me. Deep let voice. me guess. Let me guess. You feel that uh, love of soap operas is somehow unmanly. It's not masculine. It is not. Well, truth be told, his father loved soap operas, and and I I really believe that that's why he left us was because he had. Charlie, come and watch uh, GH with me. Now, this is the Quartermain clan, and they're uh, they're the villains. They're the villains in this world. And that's uh, Dr. Noah Drake, played by Rick Springfield. Dad, I'm so sorry, but <laughs> your voice is doing that thing where it's rattling my window again. I just, I can't get my homework done. Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. Ugh. Hey, sorry, uh... It's me, Tom from across the street. Uh, Hi, Tom from across the street. Hey, um, everyone in our house is uh, voiding their bowels and bladder. (laughs) (laughs) Could you, could you just try to talk Uh, in a higher register? It's really becoming a problem. Uh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, I gotta run. (laughs) Oh God. Oh no. Am I some kind of monster, kids? (laughs) Yeah. A deep, resonant, booming monster. I may have to go to a place where personal space is not an issue. <laughs> just, just so you know, Mary, <clears throat> soap operas are a very masculine form of entertainment. There's mm-hmm. a lot of men on them. Mm-hmm. A lot of men write them. And they have a connection to our earliest stories. Joseph Campbell will tell you that. Charlie, I... Uh I think you should open your mouth and stick out your tongue for the doctor. He, yeah. has, he hasn't asked me to do that. I think you should do it. I feel like that's the next step. Listen, I am going to ask you to do that, but it was my idea. It's not because Mary said <laughs> oh, hey. Doctor, I think you should look at my son's tongue and stick the sticky thing in it and decide if he's sick or not. The tongue depressor. All right. I'm not the doctor here. No, you certainly aren't, Mary. <laughs> You're no Dr. Noah Drake. Thanks, Doc. You're welcome. 
Who was the other doctor? Was Jack P. Wagner a doctor on that show? No, he wasn't. Frisco Jones. Yeah, he was. He was Frisco Jones. He, was he wasn't a doctor? a doctor, no. But he was Frisco Jones. He was totally Frisco he was, Jones. He was a bad guy, but he turned into a good guy. We thought he was a bad guy, but then he turned out to be a good it guy. He was Jack Wagner. <laughs> Jack P. Wagner. Jack P. Wagner. Um, doctor, I'm sorry. I was... Uh, listening what on the is intercom. it, Joan? I was listening on the intercom as you've instructed me to do. Thank you. So that I can tell you if you are wandering too far off and talking about soap operas all the time. I'm not, am I? You were. Oh, yeah. Boy, yeah. Oh boy. I actually, um, I brought in this ear horn because I thought I heard Charlie say something about having a hearing problem. Oh, huh? yes. Charles, are you familiar what? with this? Okay, I'm trying to talk to you. Hey, Just. <laughs> <laughs> Charles. Char- pardon? Charles. Charlie. Are you familiar with this device? Didn't catch that. <laughs> will you get the, the whiteboard out? I will. Yeah. I will. He Charlie, can... are you being sassy right now? Mary, does he have his letters? Can he read? He can read. All right. You can read, right? You can read. <laughs> Charles, look at the sign here. Yeah, I can read that. Okay. So do you know what this instrument is? No, I've never seen anything like that. Looks like a... Fucking saxophone. <laughs> okay, I think I know what's <laughs> happening here. Language is atrocious. I know I'm just I'm a nurse, so, so I don't know anything. Joan, thank you for acknowledging you're just a nurse and thank I'm you, a doctor. doctor. I'm so sorry. I mean, you probably are going to arrive at this conclusion, but I, I bet just. I am. I'm sensing that he has some sort of psychological deafness to anything except soap operas. You're saying he's got. <laughs> Did you say soap PD? operas? <laughs> you see? He heard that. He can hear everything when he's arguing about soap operas. What do you want to talk, he, Guiding Light? He can't hear us when we're talking about real emotional issues. It's like he's huh? he's running away into these soap operas what? for some reason that so I can't say soap opera? out. He's <laughs> Oh, God. You think it's it's a clear case of P-D-T-E-B-S-O. I do. And let me just try one thing. I want to use some soap before I visit the opera. Okay, so it has to be soap opera in that what? order. Did you say soap yeah, opera? I it's did. when the two words are together. Yes, that's right. Hmm. Now, I haven't seen a case like this in quite some time. I think the last recorded case in the New England Journal of Medicine probably dates back to the very first soap opera. The very the- first soap opera? What, what was that? <laughs> it was on the radio. It was called I'll Try Living Tomorrow. Don't you understand? I cannot leave this place without you. You must come with me. But I have so many commitments here. No, your commitments, they can all go to the devil, don't you see? We must be together. Our love is pure and simple. And and, and temporary. Temporary? Why? Whatever do you mean? Because I'm married. I'm already married. To whom? I'm I'm married. (laughs) (laughs) To whom? I'll dash dash him to the rocks. Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, my law practice partner? Uh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How did I not know that you were married? It's been kept a secret. We didn't want to hurt you. Well, I'm here to practice law. Daniel. D- Dan- Daniel. My uh, law practice partner. Stephen, my law practice partner. Oh, please don't fight over me. Here's some guns. I'm afraid. <laughs> I'll take a gun, thank you. I'll take a gun as well. Wait, both of you. Before you have a duel, make sure you have a little bit of malta meal in your stomach. Malta meal, it's delicious breakfast. Malta meal, delicious breakfast. Everything you need in a box of shit. <laughs> Man, that sounds like the day. <laughs> I'm sure it was the day, Charlie. I'm sure it was the day. Charlie, you are breaking my heart. You're breaking my heart, and I have a date tonight, so we have got to get this whole situation cleared before I have a date tonight. Mary, Mrs. Wangarosu. <sighs> That's exactly right. Listen, before you get upset, before your heart is broken by Charles, here's what you gotta know. His case is so unique. We're gonna... <laughs> I think he's going to be uh, famous. We're gonna take him uh, on television and tell everyone about his condition. And then he'll become the poster child for this condition. Famous? Yes, famous! Famous as in... Famous Amos? Famous Amos? From the cookies? Yeah, that's He'll be exactly as famous as (laughs) Famous Amos from the cookies. Did you say I'm going to be on television? That's right, Charles. During the day? Yes. (gasps) Wow. And not just during The Price is Right, (laughs) but in the later hours when you know what comes on. I could be up for a daytime Emmy. Well... Are you Australian? (laughs) Um... 
Doctor, I'm sorry. Will you guys excuse me? I'm hearing some strange hymnal sounds coming from the waiting room. Yes, certainly, Joan. <sighs> bringing in, in the, the sheaves, sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. sheaves. We, we will go rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. sheaves. Big finish. Bringing in the sheaves. That was uh, that was pretty good, considering we had no rehearsal. The only thing I feel we have between us that's something I can love is singing, Mama. Whether or not I believe the words. Oh, Ruth, my dear, lovely daughter, that I love more than anything except Jesus Christ. <laughs> I wish that television weren't so sinful and that I could go on the television with you and we could sing our songs of praise for all to see and love. Mama, you're you're preaching to the choir now. I. Ooh, I like that expression. It's religious. I immediately regret it. Regretted it after I said it. I do have a secret desire to be on television. What? I just feel like it's the only thing that makes a person valuable anymore. Ruth, don't you know that a secret is sinful? In Hannibal 12, it says, A child shall not keep a secret thing from a mother. It is no good. And then does it say after that, And therefore shall that parent eat that child? Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I cussed. Please don't eat me, Mama. I will not Please eat you. Don't that, eat me. that is one area of the Bible I choose to interpret figuratively rather than literally. I cannot tell you what a relief that is. Ruth. Mama. We'll find a way to go on television that is not sinful, I promise you. Okay. Do you believe in me, child? No. Why would kids you humor me? <laughs> but I believe in myself against all odds. Ruth. You are my beloved child, and I wish you all the best when you are roasting in hell. Until then, we will figure out a way to get on television. Charles, I want you to come with me. We're going to go to a TV studio. We're going to plead our case. <laughs> and I bet they'll have no choice but to put you on television. Charlie, I'm so sorry I doubted you. I'm so sorry. Whatever you need, Doc. Yo, did you hear me? I said I was sorry. <laughs> huh? But try try to get the word soap opera in there somewhere. Uh, soap opera, sorry. You got it, Mom. I, the only thing we can't promise you, though, because the TV studio is very far away, is I don't know if you'll make it to your date tonight. Oh, I'm going to go on the date, and you can oh, take okay. my son. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. All right. Well, what do I know? I'm just a kid doctor. I'm not a parent myself, nor would I ever be. Ugh. All right. Let's go to the TV studio. Ruth, did you hear that? Did I just hear someone say they were going that to a TV studio? That loud doctor said they were going to a TV studio. Well, if we just climb in the back of their pickup truck, they may not notice that we're in there. Let's get in the back of that pediatrician's pickup truck. I'll hide under that bale of hay. <laughs> that medical hay. I'll hide under, yes, hide under the medical hay. Okay, okay, mama. And I'll get, I'll get under all the old coats. <laughs> Ruth? Yes, mama? I think things are going to turn around for us. Something's happening, that's for damn sure. I mean, darn. Watch, watch your mouth, child. Okay, I don't know what's going to happen here. But we're going to find out when Spontaneous Nation returns. My name is Lisa. I'm a mattress company. Hi, it's me, Paul F. Tompkins, to tell you about Lisa Mattresses. What is Lisa? Well, I'll tell you what. They're a mattress company that makes mattresses. And they, here's what they don't do. Provide you with an awkward mattress shopping experience. The kind where you have to go 3D IRL to try out a mattress. Lie around on some bare mattress in your street clothes. In your shoes. Looking up at fluorescent lights. While people judge you. Because it's unflattering. Because like you're... You have a double chin because you're lying down. And you know they take camera phone pics of you, I'm assuming. You don't have to go through that now. Because Lisa has created a luxury mattress that is ordered completely online and ships for free to your doorstep. And get, guess what? This is no, no extra charge. It's compressed in a box the size of a mini fridge. What? I get a free box to store my spare mini fridge in? Well, no, you don't. Because the... 
The box is the size of an actual mini fridge. A mini fridge box would be slightly larger than a mini fridge. So you're out of luck there. The 10 inch mattress comes in all sizes. It is crafted with three unique foam layers for cooling supportive comfort. Are these three layers, are they themselves the same, but unique in terms of layers or are they unique from one another? I don't know. Why don't you get this mattress and cut it open and find out? Maybe you're an eccentric millionaire and you have money to burn. Lisa gives you 100 nights to try your mattress risk-free. And for every 10 they sell, they donate one to a shelter. How else? That's, come on, guys. That's an amazing thing. Why wouldn't you want to support this company? That's decency in action. Go to leesa.com slash PFT and enter promo code PFT at checkout. You get $75 off. Lisa. Spelled differently than you think it is. Oh, that was quite an arduous journey, Ruth. I, I feel as if my bones have been shaken all about in my body. Well, I have a lot of hay in my hair, and you also have some old coats still left on you. Oh, I th- do I have a gold coat on me? Yeah, let me brush that off you. I can't, you know, I, do, I don't have as much feeling in my nerve endings in my skin as I used to because of my advanced age. I know, Mama. Hi, can I help you, ladies? Who are you here to see? Oh, hello. We're here to we're here with the do- with the doctor. To, with the doctor? Yes, to go to the TV station studio. Okay. Uh, yes, this is uh, WKLA. That's right. Okay. So we we are here. We're here. We are. To here we are. To okay. Do and are, are you on some sort of list? We are. Oh, yeah, on, well, we're on you that list. Li- we're on certainly let me, on let list. Let me tell you about a list. When the okay, roll is Mama, called up yonder, I don't think this is the right time. <laughs> hopefully, your name will be on that list, that and you list. will ascend to heaven. Okay, to be so with you're the saying Lord when the rapture Jesus occurs. Christ. Well, yes, that's right. Well, you'll be on that saying. list. Okay, well, but I'm I've talking said, more specifically about the list of people who are allowed to come. come is it possible they're one and the same? Yeah. Well, doesn't that one list cover all lists? So you think the, the list of people who have business today with WKLA is the same people who ascend uh, to heaven in the rapture? Mr. Gard, may I ask you a question? What is your name, sir? My name is Rudy. Rudy. Who would you rather have entering the kingdom of your television station? Uh, would you rather have people who are entering the kingdom of hell or people entering the kingdom of heaven? Well, it's TV. We like to get ratings, so I think some people who are going to hell would be interesting, you know? That's why people book Donald Trump for TV shows. Well, well my mama thinks I'm going to hell, and, I, and she thinks she's going to heaven. That's salacious. Well, I hope I'm going to heaven, but my daughter is a sinful, wicked child who has no choice but to go to hell, and it is quite a shame. Look, I make one exception for people who are on, on the list. <laughs> oh. If you have an incredible pitch of why you should be at a TV studio. Oh, I don't play baseball. Who like it? Oh. I just, I feel like only overweight people do. Poor child, I've tried to shield her from TV terms as best I could. Yeah, baseball's for fatties. Eh? Everyone knows that. <laughs> oh, okay. Great big fat men who do not care to move. Why do you think you should be in this TV studio today? Oh, is this like an elevator pitch? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like a, like a, you want a log line? <laughs> Mama, what well, you is know this? Lot, it's like you're speaking in tongues. You know a lot you're about the biz for a, for a very a religious lady. Well, listen, uh, listen. I, I I was not always a religious woman. Mama, there was a t- there was a time I had another. <laughs> there was a time I had another life. <laughs> All right, I want we're, we're going live in ten. I want you to cut the shit, get that cigarette out of here. We don't smoke in my control room. Yes, ma'am. And you. <laughs> You, where's my goddamn latte? I ordered it five minutes ago, which means it should have been here ten minutes ago. I'm so sorry. I'm having such a hard day. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, let me make it easier for uh-huh. you. You're fired. Oh, my God. <laughs> I have all of your script revisions right here. It's, it's fine. Do me a favor, Mumbles. Throw them in the trash. You're fired. Uh, all right. We're going to make ratings history with this bullshit. Everybody shut the fuck up and get ready to show some ugliness on television. In five, four, yeah, I'll do the countdown. You're fired, Ted. <laughs> Three, <laughs> two, I say it out loud. One, I say that out loud, too. <gasps> I produced a reality television show that was all about showing the ugliness of human beings. You're Monique Devereaux. Yes, I am that person. Mama. Well, you were known for your foul mouth and your tough attitude. I think... I what can't is it, Ruth? This. There, there were rumors that you found God and got out of the biz, but now you're back. 
Well, rumor mongering is, of course, a sin, so you're going to hell. But uh, in this case, it turns out to be true. I have found God, and and, uh, I have renounced television. So you're saying you might have some connections to TV now that could get us on the air? But child, do not make me exploit those connections, for they are sinful people. Well, Mama, if if there was time to exploit your sinful connections, I I would think that it would be this one. Rudy, I want to ask you a question. I know I have asked you many questions. That's all right, Miss Devereaux. I have another question to ask you. Is there a woman in that building who goes by the name of Charlene Antiqua? <laughs> Charlene Antiqua is definitely there, yeah. She was my protege, and if memory serves, she is now the head of this television station. Is that oh, correct? yeah, she's even more foul-mouthed and tough-talking than you are. Will you please tell Miss Antiqua that her old boss, mentor, and nemesis, Monique Devereaux, is outside? I will do that. Thank you, Rudy. This is... I don't know it's weird, say. right, child? Uh, for one thing, I did not realize so many French people were in television. <laughs> so many. <laughs> so many. It used to be Spanish people. Can't have one or the other. Gotta have one or the other. <laughs> Miss Antiqua, I'm so sorry to interrupt what you. What the fuck <laughs> do you want from me? Look, I, I know- am really Busy. Look, I know you're about to do this impromptu soap opera with that kid and that doctor who just showed up randomly here, uh, but are, are you what? What? I, I Monique Devereaux is here. <gasps> the Monique Devereaux. Your mentor. My motherfucking mentor. <laughs> okay, there's no need for that. <laughs> well, bring her on up. Bring her on up, and five. Four. Three. Do you want to be fired? Two. No. Yes, yes. I got her. One. Well, what did she say? Well, uh, she said motherfucking a lot. Okay, I don't need the curse words. Okay, she said five, four, Oh, I know what that means. She said them all out loud. I don't know if the control room can handle both of these personalities, but for God's sake, it's like a soap opera. We're about to find out. This is a pretty good green room. What do you think, Charles? Yeah, I like it, Doc. They have a lot of magazines to thumb through, Doctor. I don't want you to lose your train of thought. Joan, you know, if I start thumbing through those magazines, I'm lost. Yeah. I'll just get I'll just get sucked in there and I'll never come out again. Well, I've done what you've asked, and I've chewed a piece of gum for every magazine and sealed all the pages shut with the gum. Thank you, Joan. Charlie, Charlie, I'm here. I, I couldn't oh, leave you. Oh, look who decided to show up. But I, Mrs. Murray's hey, That's exactly right. <laughs> I brought my date. I thought it would be a good first date. Please meet Julio. Hello, hello, Charlie. This guy, this guy's Julio? Yes, and I'm in love with him. It's only been a few minutes, but I know. I can feel it in my stomach. Hey, we got kind of a magic thing going on. (laughs) He's very suave. (laughs) He's almost like a guy straight out of a soap opera. Yeah, his accent is very charming. I thought you would like that, Charlie. Do you not like that? No, uh, he's kind of cool. He's no dad, but he's cool. <laughs> but thank you very much, Charlie. I'm not trying to replace your dad. I'm just trying to uh, romance your mom. So what's going on here today? You uh, putting on a soap opera? Well, I mean, not a real life soap opera. Starting to feel like this is more interesting than what we would be doing on TV. Joe, I'm just a nurse. I don't know what I'm talking about. You certainly don't, Joe. That's absurd. I apologize to everyone. We we have. I have a a child here who has a very rare condition where he's (laughs) he's deaf to anything but soap opera talk. Hmm. It's all he can hear. Please don't make fun of him. He's a very sensitive young man. He's a very sensitive young man. You 14 can make fun years of him. old. It's fine. You can make fun of him. And that is why he has that saxophone sticking out of his ear. It's not a saxophone. It's an ear trumpet. An ear trumpet. Yes. Oh. Do they have ear trumpets where you're from, Julio? Which, by the way, where are you from? Yes. Where are you from? France? France. <laughs> oh, I, I beg your pardon. No. Just taking a guess. I am from Praha. Oh. Praha. Sure. Praha. Praha. You Praha. know, we hear, we just, I think we Joan, say, say Praha. 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 I, I can't. Joan. I, I couldn't possibly. Joan, you're being rude. I Praha. could. Praha. I, Joan. I don't feel Praha. comfortable. Why? What's you saying? That is not Praha. Just doing Praha. That. I say am Praha. from Praha, Joan. I, Praha. Joan, why don't you say Praha? We say Prague. We say Prague. Ah. Well, uh, hello, Charlene. Well, if it isn't my motherfucking 
Monique. That's right, Charlene. It is I who prefer that you do not use those edible curse come words. Back, come back. Crawling. You're crawling back. I am not crawling back. What? I have my head held quite high. Thank you very much. Um, crawl, my head is high girl. As... Crawl. Uh, Charlene, I'm... you're being very challenging to me, and I'm trying to be a good Christian woman right now. Um, I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask this, but what happened between the two of you? When was the last time you saw each other? It's been quite a while. Um, Monique, I, I just want you to know that I, I really appreciate all the advice you've ever given me in my career. And I, I love you, Monique. Can I give you one last motherfucking piece of advice, Charlie? Please, please do. Please do. Let, let me get on my knees first. Yeah, get down on your goddamn knees. I want you to uh, listen to what I'm about to fucking say, okay? I'm listening. I, my get ears out, are open. Get out your ear trumpet and give a good goddamn listen. Okay, here it goes. Better that you eat a bag of human shit before you ever profess love to another living creature because that is a weakness. You understand me, stupid? Oh, God. You dumb piece of dirt. <laughs> I, I'll now. never be the same again. <laughs> Oh, so I've that's killed horrible. three people since then. <laughs> oh my God, Mama, that's your fault. Now it is not my fault if she chooses to take the life of another, which Scripture prescribes. You can never absolve the guilt that lies on your shoulders because this woman took lives over you. Oh, what? sure, I can't watch this. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry. Done. Now uh, I can go to heaven again. You got me there. What do you that want, Monique? That's how works. Is that what works? What do you want? What are you here for? What the fuck do you want? Charlene, I will endure your cuss words that I might ask you one one tiny indulgence for all that I have done for you in the past. That you have risen to the status uh, to which you have risen, uh, doing no small part to my caring, kind advice. Charlene, I want to go on television with my daughter and sing a hymn. <laughs> You come into my office, you with your with your thing that you've made that you created, that daughter, and you ask me for a favor, and you stand there looking really cute with your stupid thing. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it <laughs> because, goddamn it, I still love you. I still love you. Shut. <laughs> and we're on in five, four, three, three two, one. We don't say those. I'm the motherfucking owner. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Monique. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Monique, but you don't say two and one. You gesture and then you point. I'm not Monique. <laughs> I'm sorry, Charlotte. I mean, I uh, am. I'm, I'm Charlene. Monique. I'm so I'm sorry. Charlene. I'm, Moody, Moody, I'm Moody, fired Moody. and I'm leaving. I'm fired and I'm leaving. I can't I know. I'm about so much to about say Moody. this, but this place, and I never thought I would say this about any place, needs the word of God. You all are a mess. Mama? Ruth. What a and we go live in five. It gladdens four, my heart to hear you say such a thing. Three, and to say ye all instead two, of you all so biblical. One <laughs> fucking rat, mama. <gasps> and we're live. My name is Charlie. My name's Dr. Uh, Ch- Charter. <laughs> and Dr. Charter and I are here to tell you about a disease. That's right. That's right, Charles. You're a brave kid. It's a disease that strikes very few people, but when it does, oh boy, does it really hit hard, right in the balls. All this, this time, the doctor's mouth has been moving, but I haven't heard anything he said. Yeah, I can say a bunch of stuff about him, like, he's dumb. He's uh, short. Uh, his voice sounds weird and adenoidal. Did you catch any of that, Charles? Not a thing, Doc. Watch this, though. Soap operas, they're great. Oh, Susan Lucci, 20-time loser. See? He's got a very special disease called DTBEBSO. He's deaf to everything but soap operas. Check now, out the, the helpful Chiron on the TV right now. This strikes one in one billion people every 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> but that's still too many. Charles needs your help. I need your help, America. Won't you send a bunch of money my way? <laughs> I bet we can figure it out. I want to hear about other things other than soap operas. Like what, Charles? Like, like America. I want to know where my dad is. Ding. Charles. Who said ding? Charles. I just got a text. I just got a text. Ding, who's, what is it, Mom? Who's this? Why, Mrs. Ding. I thought you were on a date. Why do you keep saying ding? I got another text, Charlie. It's from your father. What's he say, goddammit? Oh, I realize now that I am not needed here anymore. 
Charlie, he's... I shall return to Praha. Oh, I feel way. like the proverbial third wheel. Charlie, he he wants to talk to you. He says he, he misses you. Dad? Well, where is he? Uh, excuse me, uh... I uh, heard tell that my son is here in this TV studio. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm the I'm the new guard. Uh, the old guard just quit like <laughs> a minute ago. Um, Rudy, are you? Rudy's are, gone. Yeah, Rudy. How did you know? Uh, he's just got a reputation. Uh, are you on the list, sir? Am I on the list? That's what I. <laughs> Everybody, asked get out while you can. His voice is making the fence crumble. <laughs> Anybody could get in here. Oh no, the fence. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm just gonna go by oh, here. My ears! We have to let him! <laughs> my nervous system is <laughs> liquefying! Now, do we go on now, or how does it work? Uh, you can do whatever you want as far as I'm concerned. Oh. Whatever you motherfucking want. I didn't know we were following the weird breakup. This is, this is a wonderful way for the two of you to mend fences. I, I just want to give you your due, your spotlight, because you deserve it. Thank you, Charlene. Thank and, you, Charlene. And remember, sapphic love is a one-way ticket to hell. All right. Are you ready, Ruth? I've never been more ready, Mama. What should we hit him with? Amazing Grace? That's a good one. <clears throat> Here we go. <clears throat> Amazing <laughs> Grace. How <laughs> the sun saved a wretch like Dad, Dad, it's you. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Mary, I'm back. Oh, my was God. Blind. Dad. The fuck's going on? I, I see. And I also hear things that aren't about soap operas. Oh, Ruth. What? Where did that come from? Ruth, that was, I think you were filled with the Holy Spirit. I feel like someone took an ear horn, put it to my lips, and God's voice came out. It was an ear horn to your soul. I'm sorry I made all of you void your bells just now. <laughs> That's all right. And I think it helped us sing better. <laughs> Charles, your dad's here. I heard that. You heard what he said? That wasn't about soap operas? You said my dad's here, right? Yeah, he did. That's what I said. Did I stutter? Oh, my God. It's a miracle. Charlie, thank God. Your nose has stopped running. My nose is... My nose has stopped running. Wait a minute. We're still I on... I probably did that, too. We're still on the air, and I, I don't want people to not send us money. Ooh. I'm afraid they're, they're not going to if they think he's cured, doctor. I mean, I'm a nurse, so I don't really know, but... Uh, uh, let me try something. Okay. Do you or someone you love suffer from <laughs> L LVBR, low voice bowel release? If so, send everything you got to the doctor's office. It'll find me. Good work, Joan. As a witness and a bowel excreter, I want to reassure everyone it is worth all the money in the world because this is a very uncomfortable mess. And I'm very sorry for being the main no! cause of LVBR. Please don't apologize! I would like to say something. What I have witnessed here today has made me realize something about my life. I thought I was a devout woman better than all the rest. <laughs> I thought I was the best around. <laughs> but now I see. I have been proud, and pride is a sin. I'm no better than any of y'all. In fact, I'm much, much worse. Because I couldn't I, agree more. Oh, Ruth, that kind of stings a little bit. Well, but I have a lot of residual anger. It's fair. I don't blame you. I didn't shit out all my anger, Mama. Not all of it. Even though Scripture advises us, <laughs> shit out all of thy anger. <laughs> get it all out of there. Because <laughs> you might get some sort of septic infection. Amen. Um, That's one of my favorite proverbs. <laughs> Monique, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but uh, we are cutting into general hospital time. What? So I had no idea. Yeah, so we need to wrap this up. up. General <laughs> hospital? What, what is that? <gasps> Charlie, you're telling me you don't know Charlie. what general hospital is anymore? He has forgotten his knowledge of stories. I mean, I have a vague, vague notion from the past, but it's just not important to me anymore. 
Wow, well, uh, this is even more rare. This child is now afflicted with a new disorder. Please tell me the acronym. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> it's, uh, TSOA. It's, uh, traumatic soap opera amnesia. Oh, oh. oh my God. Yeah. And there's no cure. Oh, Charlie. Uh, this is so much worse than if he had no relationship with his father. Yeah, it is, right? It's <laughs> I mean, not worth it. Well, I mean, you know, he's, it's not fatal or anything. It's just that he'll never, ever remember anything about uh, I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> well, Charles, it's been great being your doctor, but uh, I, don't, I don't deal with losers. <laughs> also, you're 14. There is no way you should be seeing a pediatrician. <laughs> no, you probably should have gone to a regular... Uh, GPA. Uh, a did, GPA? A no. GPA, yeah. What is it called? A GP? <laughs> not, a general practitioner. Not a, gra- not a grade point average, sure. but a general practitioner. <laughs> Look, leave the, leave the acronyms to the pros, lady, okay? You know what you're at. I'm no pediatrician. <laughs> <laughs> well, what say? We all leave this TV studio at the same time. Okay. Everybody want to hop on my back? My guess is they're just going to have to burn this place down after the wreckage we caused. I don't blame them. And they should salt the earth, that nothing more may grow here. <laughs> Charlie, you're going to be fine. Thanks, Mom. Well, what about... You can play basketball now. I couldn't before. And your marriage? I mean, your husband's back. Julio's gone. It's... How are you two doing? I mean, well, he just got back. I'm not sure yet. But How's it going, though? It, I'm, I'm in love. Feels How's good. it been? Feels good. Feels good. Feels, Feels good, good to be back. He, he is very tan. Uh, he looks I was, terrific. I was driving a truck in Bombay all this time. They call it Mumbai now. Did you get any accidents? N- nothing but accidents. <laughs> You know what? Every I've single heard time that you got every single time. time. You, yeah. If you always have your hand on the horn, there's no knowing if there's an actual emergency that would cause you to need you to use your horn. I mean, I'm just a nurse. I don't know. But that's what I would imagine. That's Do not- you use my ear horn? <laughs> oh, this Rapture. place is burning down. <laughs> and it all happened in a place called... Pediatrician's office. <laughs> Carla Kakowski, where are you on the socials? Wait, is it over? <laughs> yeah, uh, there wasn't that the logical ending? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Everyone laughed and the place was burning to the ground. It was so fun. I didn't want it to end. It uh, almost didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we all tried, though, to end it. Uh, what, what was the question, Paul? Don't get mad. Where, Don't get mad. Where, can, where are you on the socials? Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty popular. <laughs> uh, at Carla Kakowski. There we go. And you're on Instagroodles. Mm-hmm. Carla Kakowski. <gasps> That's right. I keep it the same for all of them. There was a thing for a while where I kept mistagging pictures of Craig <laughs> as you. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes the lag time and when the names would come up would be just at the right time where I would press the thing, but then your name would pop up. <laughs> It's okay. It was frustrating. Now I wait forever. I was honored. Until everything <laughs> settles before I touch anything. I was honored in your false tagging even. It's like, oh, Paul false tagged me again. It's Better so to be mistagged than not tagged at all. Oscar Wilde. <laughs> <laughs> and your podcast is available now? Uh, yes. This is February. Yes. Whoa. It mm-hmm. better be. Wow. Yeah. It is. Ooh, ooh, ultimatum. <laughs> Let's go over to your husband, Craig. Hey, hey, Craig, where can people find you online? At Kikowski on Twitter. Craig is oh, my boy. name and oh, see Kikowski on Instagram. Hashtag Kack Attack. Hashtag Kack Attack. Where are you at, Kack Attackers? We want to hear from you. Text one for yes, two for no. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Varney. Where can people find you around? I wish I could say at Lil Janet Varney. Oh, I know. But I haven't made that change yet. (laughs) That life change. (laughs) I think it'll happen to you. I think that's what's going to happen. I guess that's all of life, isn't it? But you're JV Club. We don't have control of anything. We don't have Uh, control of anything. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. Uh, The Instagram is uh, the JV Club and Twitter is at Janet Varney. There we go. And the JV Club podcast, which is wonderful. Mm, Thank you. Evan Schletter, Evan Schletter on Twitter, EvanSchletter.com. Go to EvanSchletter.com and buy Evan Schletter's albums because he is only the best. Thank you to Earwolf for hosting us. Oh! Shut up, everybody. No, you shut up. Thursdays. 10 p.m. On Fusion. 
watch it. You can't see it on Fusion? See it online. We put the episodes up online. YouTube, Hulu, places like that. You can find it. Stop pretending that you can't. Spontaneous Nation Live happens the second Saturday, or the first Saturday. Why did I say the second Saturday? <laughs> it happens the first Saturday of every month. These shows are always a lot of fun. Please do come out and see them. Check paulftompkins.com slash live for tickets and dates and lineups. And I love you. <laughs> Thanks to Earwolf for hosting us. Thank you to Engineer Ryan for engineering us all the way to the end of the show, which this is. Goodbye forever. Until next week, this is Paul F. Tompkins saying, Semper in Presenti. Thanks again to Spretza Box for sponsoring today's episode. If you work in a corporate environment or if you just like wearing dress socks, this is the subscription box for you. Every month, Spretza Box sends you five to six stylish products that are guaranteed to retail for over $100, but your cost, just $25. A fantastic savings. The box typically includes products such as ties, wallets, sunglasses, watches, and more. Everything is yours to keep, plus shipping is free, and you get a personal stylist. If you're ready to jump on a great deal, go to SpretzaBox.com and get 20% off your first month's box with discount code PFT. That's S-P-R-E-Z-Z-A-B-O-X dot com. Hey, Earwolf listeners. This is Hillary Frank from The Longest Shortest Time. On our show, we talk to parents. I just put sex on the list of things that I have to do that day as soon as the baby goes to sleep. We talk to kids. Sex in a boat. Sex in a wolf. Sex in Jupiter. And we talk about how those kids were made in the first place. I'm pulling down his pants, you know, hurry up, just do it. <laughs> the Longest Shortest Time. It's a family show for grown-ups. Listen at LongestShortestTime.com, Earwolf.com, or wherever you listen to podcasts. This has been an Earwolf production. Executive producers Scott Ackerman, Adam Sachs, Chris Bannon, and Paul F. Tompkins. For more media and content, go to Earwolf.com. 